A definition of marketing. Professor Philip Kotler defines marketing as the social and managerial process by which individuals and groups obtain what they want and need through creating, offering and exchanging products of value with others. This process is built upon the basic notions of demand, supply, needs and desires that we have discussed in the previous lecture. The American Marketing Association has defined it as the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that have the value for customers, clients, partners and society at large. Marketing Objectives A successful marketing strategy must have SMART objectives. It stands for Specific, Measurable, Action-Oriented, Realistic and Time-Related. Typically, the objectives are the following. Economic Objectives profitability, increasing of sales, increasing market share, functional objectives, growth, brand awareness, stock market investments, gaining leadership within the specific sector also through the launch of new products or services, targeting new customers or new market segments both on the local and international levels, and social objectives, enhance customer relationships, support relations with stakeholders, creating employment, creating inclusive benefits for disadvantaged groups. Marketing Role Marketing serves a fundamental role in most organizations. At the organizational level, marketing is a vital business function that is necessary in nearly all industries, whether the organization operates as a for-profit, in which marketing sustains revenues and profits, or as a non-profit, in which marketing serves a function of attracting customers needed for the non-profit's mission, as raising funds and donations, or supporting a cause. For both types of organizations, it is unlikely they can survive without a strong marketing effort. Marketing is also the organizational business area that interacts most frequently with the public, and consequently, what the public knows about an organization is determined by their interactions with marketers. For example, customers may believe a company is dynamic and creative based on its advertising message. In a nutshell, we can state that the role played by marketing is to create an interface between the company and its external environment, to carry out an analysis of competitors and to develop a competitive positioning strategy, to create a product value for real prospective customers through brand management and brand positioning. Marketing and Sales A successful company's marketing strategy requires to firstly carry out a customer's needs analysis so that its production can be consequently adjusted according to those needs, not the other way around. Subsequently, a thorough advertising and promotion activity is necessary to make a product visible and outstanding in order to put it on sale or on availability in the market. Advertising, which is a function of marketing, encompasses methods of communication with audience designed to produce sales inquiries and or improve awareness perceptions of products, brand and organization. Advertising, when properly executed, is the statistically driven and measurable implementation of marketing strategy via carefully selected communication methods targeted at predetermined audiences. Promotion, instead, is the broader concept of disseminating information about a product, product line, a brand, or a company of which advertising belongs. The American Marketing Association defines marketing management as the process of planning and realizing the concept, the pricing, the promotion and dissemination of ideas, goods, or services with the purpose of creating an exchange aimed at reaching the objectives of individuals and organizations. In other words, it is the planning and implementation process of a company's activities, such as the design, the price allocation, the promotion and distribution of products and services, with the aim to set up exchanges to, sati to satisfy customers, both individuals and companies. A good marketing management process First of all, foresees a so-called SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, 
related to the company's performance. Then a competitor's analysis, which includes information on their source of profit, on their resources and competences, on their positioning, on their product strategies, and so on. Third, it's important to invest on in research and data collection through focus groups, statistical surveys, and observations. A fourth step should be the examination of the brand's position within the market. How well is it working? What opportunities or threats are there? Cost and prices are still competitive? Is the brand's share stable, decreasing or increasing? The fifth step should comprise the development of a marketing strategy to include the organization's positioning, the brand management, the communication activity, and in case, new product development. We can sketch the management activity with these following main points. One, market knowledge, so the knowledge of its opportunities. Two, establishment of a company's mission in order to appoint the target markets. Three, use of a marketing mix, also known as marketing strategies. Four, positioning, marketing activities planning. Five, product development through marketing approaches. And six, product life cycle supervision. It means the efficiency and efficacy of a product. It is extremely important to get a thorough knowledge of the market we're working in and its surrounding environment in order to be a market-oriented business. This knowledge should be consistently integrated and updated. In order to get a relevant knowledge of the market we're working in, we first of all need to examine the micro-environment and then the macro-environment. The micro-environment, it can be defined as the inner environment of a company as it includes customers, intermediaries, suppliers, service providers and producers, consultants, competitors and the company itself. So first of all, customers. A customer may be an individual or an organization that purchases a product for use in the production of other products or that purchases a product for resale at a profit. This customer factor of a marketing microenvironment can be further divided into business and institutional customers and state, city or municipal government's customers. Marketing specialists or marketers develop and market messages to appeal to, com to company individual customer needs. Intermediaries. This could be resellers, distribution firms, marketing services and financial intermediaries. Organizations typically rely on banks, venture capitalists and other sources to finance operations on wholesalers and retailers, on warehouses and transportation companies to distribute goods, and on market research firms or public relation firms to market their products. The marketing strategy is defined in part on the degree to which each intermediary can potentially increase or decrease customer satisfaction. Suppliers, service providers or producers, from which the company purchases goods and services. A company relies on other producers and vendors for supplies and other production factors, such as labor, utilities and equipment required to produce or deliver a product to a customer. As a result, events affecting a producer or vendor also have the potential to impact customer satisfaction, whether those events impact the availability of materials, supply chain costs or product quality. A marketing department formulates its marketing strategy in light of these risk factors as well. Consultants, which support in marketing and advertising choices, as well as stakeholders. Stakeholders have a direct influence on your business, although they're not generally paying customers. Employee are stakeholders in your business as well. The government or governments of countries in which you trade are all stakeholders. Your local community or neighbors are stakeholders too. Consultants also play a key role here as they work directly with other company marketers to help identify target market segments, find ways to market to those segments and help implement those strategies. Marketing consultants provide companies with risk assessments of various marketing scenarios and allow company directors to choose from various strategies with input from, from a consultant. 
They may also provide training or workshops for current marketing teams, informing team of new or better strategies. Competitors, which are companies with similar offerings for goods and services. Can the organization offer benefits that are better than those offered by competitors? Does the business have a unique selling point? Competitor analysis and monitoring is crucial if an organization is to maintain or improve its position within the market. If a business is unaware of its competitors' activities, they will find it very difficult to beat their competitors. The market can move very quickly, for example, through a change in trading conditions, consumer behavior or technological developments. As a business, it is important to examine competitors' responses to these changes so that you can maximize the impact of your response. And then the company itself. All departments within an organization have the potential to positively or negatively impact customer satisfaction. As a result, a marketing department works closely with the finance, purchasing, research and development, and manufacturing departments, among others, to identify ways that each department can contribute to the provision of exceptional customer value, which leads to superior customer satisfaction. The macro environment. It can be defined as all those forces that are part of a larger society and affect the micro environment. Any business shall therefore adapt to these factors. It includes demographic forces, economic factors, natural or physical forces, technological factors, political or legal factors, as well as social and cultural environment. The demographic forces. It refers to human population in terms of age, ethnicity, education level, cultural characteristics, lifestyle, location, occupation, and so on, which surely is a fundamental factor for marketers as it, as it helps identify the people into market segments. This can be beneficial to marketer as they can decide who would benefit most of the product and tailor their marketing plan to track that segment. Economic factors. This refers to the purchasing power of people and the ways in which to spend money. The economic environment can impact both the production and the consumer's decision-making process. Natural or physical forces. This includes concerns over the increased pollution, shortages of raw material and therefore the use of non-renewable and renewable resources. Technological factors. This includes all skills and knowledge applied to production of technology and materials needed for production. It is to say all developments from antibiotics and surgery to nuclear missiles and chemical weapons to automobiles and credit cards. A company must stay informed on trends so they can be part of the next big thing rather than becoming outdated and suffering the consequences financially. Political or legal factors. It is to say all political and or legal developments relating to the organization and its markets. This includes all laws, government agencies and groups that influence or limit other organizations and individuals within a society. It is important for marketers to be aware of these restrictions as they can be complex. Social and cultural environment. These factors include the impact that the products or services your organization brings to the market have on society. This factor relates to the institutions and basic values and beliefs of a group of people. As a marketer, it is important to focus the marketing campaign to reflect the values of a target audience. A company's mission and vision. The vision, it serves as the aspirational framework to guide both in the short term and in the long term every aspect of an individual or an organization on business by describing what needs to be accomplished, which goals are to be achieved, and how to pursue a sustainable and qualitative growth. A mission is fundamental to have a success within the market as it guides the organization towards the satisfaction of customers' needs and is based upon the valorization of its resources, human capital, knowledge and competences, investments, financial capitals, and so on, an organization's roadmap starts with a mission, which must be enduring and must be the standard against which actions and decisions are weighed. A company's mission shall therefore have the following characteristics. 
be realistic, be specific, be capabilities-based, and be inspiring. The Marketing Mix is a business tool used in marketing and by marketers. It can be a valuable instrument when determining the product or brand's offer and is often associated with factors such as the four P's proposed by Professor E. Jerome McCarthy in the 1960s, which stands for Promotion, Price, Product and Place. They eventually became the seven P's adding up process, people and physical environment to them. Product is the item that satisfies what a consumer demands. It could be a tangible good or an intangible service. Every product is moreover subject to a life cycle including a growth phase followed by maturity phase and finally an eventual period of decline as sales fall. Marketers must do careful research on how long the life cycle of the product they are marketing is likely to be and focus their attention on different challenges that arises as the product moves. Marketers should also consider how to position the product, how to exploit the brand, and how to exploit the company's resources. Price is the act of determining the value of the product. It's very important as it determines the company's profit and hence its survival. Adjusting the price has a profound impact on the marketing strategy, and depending on the price elasticity of the product, Often, it will affect the demand and sales as well. When setting a price, the marketer must be aware of the customer perceived value for the product. Promotion refers to that process of communication that a marketer may use to provide information to different parties about a product. Promotion comprises elements such as advertising, public relations, sales organization, sales promotion. Advertising covers any communication comprising cinema commercials, radio and internet advertisements, through to print media and billboards, which can be paid or unpaid. Public relations is where the communication is not directly paid for and includes press releases, sponsorship deals, exhibitions, conferences, seminars or trade fairs and events. Place is tightly linked to the distribution of the product or the service and refers to the action of providing the product at a place which is convenient for consumers to access. There are different strategies that can be used by marketers to support the marketing of a product, such as intensive distribution, selective distribution, exclusive distribution and franchising. The distribution channels are generally retail shops, but there are also other means as online purchasing, telephone or call centers. TV, and so on. Positioning is part of a marketing strategy aimed at making the brand occupy a distinct position in respect to competing brands in the mind of customers. Businesses apply this strategy either by emphasizing the distinguishing features of the brand or by trying to create a suitable image, like inexpensive or luxurious product entry-level or high-end product, and so on. Through advertising and promoting. Positioning is one of the most powerful marketing concepts and nowadays many companies use this concept as part of their everyday marketing activities or strategies and is also used as a tool for explaining how consumers can relate to foreign markets easier. It can also be defined as the effort to influence consumer perception of a brand or product in relation to the perception of comp competing brands or products. Its objective is to occupy a clear, unique and advantageous position in the consumer's mind. Product Development and Life Cycle Supervision The development of a new product foresees different steps. First off, the generation of an idea. Idea generation is strongly influenced by so-called external sources such as customers, consumer trends, competitors, distributors, and suppliers. This phase must be followed by an idea screening, in which unrealistic or undefined ideas must be dropped. Following is the concept development to create a detailed idea stated in meaningful customer terms. A test of this concept idea shall help improve it and boost its marketability. The fourth step shall be the development of a marketing strategy based on the previously mentioned marketing mix tool.
in which the focus must be on the target market, the product positioning and the profit goals for the first years. A business analysis could help its successful development. The product price, its distribution channels and costs must also be part of the strategy. It could also help to outline a long-run sales and profit goals in order to have a framework to work on. This should be followed by the product prototype development and testing, or pilot. If the outcomes of the testing phase are positive, the business can proceed on into commercializing its product. The supervision of the product life cycle, PLC, will focus on all stages of business, of business activity, from the introductory phase in which costs are relatively high and profits are quite negative, here advertising and promoting play a key role. This phase should be followed by a growth stage in which sales and profits raise as a consequence of good market penetration and distribution as well as competition becomes harsher. The growing phase matures when the sales peaks, competition declines, prices are set to match or beat competition, and a good advertising activity stresses brand differences and benefits. There could be a final declining stage in which profits and sales sink, prices are cut, and weak items are phased out. The marketing function. A role that helps a company to identify potentially successful products for the marketplace and then promote them by differentiating them from similar products. Typical marketing function types within a larger business might include performing market research, producing a marketing plan, a product development, as well as strategically overseeing advertising, promotion, distribution for sale, customer service, and public, public relations. The roles of marketing function covers can be summarized as follows. To the bottom left quarter, the routine executive role. It is present when a market knowledge and a market, and market policies don't have a relevant influence on a business and therefore marketing information are neglected as they are considered uninfluential. The bottom right quarter, the creative operative role, is present when policies of promotion and communication are the core of business objective, but the market analysis is ignored or excluded. The upper quarters are characterized by the importance of a customer and the market analysis. Only when the marketing function is bestowed one of these roles, we can observe a marketing-oriented business. The upper left quarter presents the strategic cognitive role, which outlines a role in which the business picks its strategies on the basis of the analysis of market variables, but without well-built communication, promotion, or, or distribution strategies. The upper right quarter shows the most important role of marketing function, the strategic operative role which presents flows of information helping the business to assess the level of attractiveness of markets, their evolution and opportunities, or even their restrictions. These analyses are especially focused on the customer expectations and on competitors with the aim to develop policies of market segmentation and positioning, assuring advantages to the business. The external variables. 1. Consumer behavior. It defines the first group of variables having a strong influence on marketing activities. What needs to be considered here is the decision process that leads a customer into purchasing a product. So two things are fundamental here, the comprehensibility of the purchasing process and the opportunity of influence. Comprehensibility of purchasing process is determined by the availability and number of information. Its difficulty could result from the degree of consumer-specific expectations. It could also be difficult to assess the value of a commodity as perceived by the consumer. The comprehensibility varies according to time and environment, to the product and the purchase policies. The opportunity to influence depends on factors tied to the purchase process such as the value of the product, the perception of its value, its distribution, its selling capability, the payment methods, promotions, the possible annexed services, all features concerning a specific brand and eventually the price. The characteristics of competitive environment define a group of two variables, the innovative pressure and the environmental resistance. The innovative pressure is linked to the technological development 
to demand and supply and to competitors. The environmental resistance is determined by the difficulties a business can face while selling its own product because of the imbalance between demand and supply, because of customers' reticence, or because of aggressive marketing policies carried out by competitors. These variables, consumers' behavior and competitive environment, do influence the marketing policies on different levels. The consumer's behavior analysis would help to face the uncertainty of the market and its customers, while the competitive environment analysis would help to determine the benefits and convenience of resources to be allocated to, the, to a determinate market. The internal variables influencing the market function essentially belong to two groups. On the one hand, the restrictions and the potentialities of a business expressed in terms of technical system and resources available, and on the other hand, the strategy adopted by the organization to market its products. The technical system. It's been analyzed that changes in production systems do have an influence on the evolution of an organization's marketing approach especially depending on the degree of rigidity or flexibility of the technical system. In the first case, it can bring about an increase of resources aimed at marketing information, so as to decrease the risks of unhappy choices and to define successful operative policies. In the case of high flexibility of technical system, due mostly to the use of new technologies, the organization can vary the quality of its product and its supply and so reach a successful strategic cognitive marketing approach. The resources available. The influence of available resources addressed to achieve a successful marketing activity is tied mainly to the human resources, so the experts, and to financial resources, so investments, advertising and promotion. The strategy adopted. Even though the surrounding environment leads the organization into favoring a specific strategy, the values and internal balance of the dominant group within the organization or the strengths and weaknesses of the organization are the factors leading to the strategy to adopt. In other words, the organization's choices and the policies adopted are not only determined by the environment, but also by the subjective choices of the organization's members. Strategic planning in marketing is a process that seeks to create a clear direction for all marketing efforts. Its outcome is summarized in a marketing plan that is regularly updated. Some of the planning elements, namely the identification of a mission, the setting of clear and sustainable objectives, and the situation analysis, have already been discussed throughout the module. We can therefore point out main fi five main features of strategic marketing planning. Identifying a mission, analyzing the situation, setting objectives, developing a marketing strategy, and planning for evaluation. Mission. The first step in strategic marketing is to articulate the reason why the enterprise exists and how it can benefit target consumers over the long term. In particular, the mission statement is intended to anticipate the future and describe an ongoing role for the organization's products, service, or expertise. For example, the mission of an airline might be to provide continuing innovation in global transportation. A hospital could state a mission to take the lead in improving public health and education. Situation analysis. Organizations conduct a situation analysis, also known as a SWOT, to evaluate and prioritize the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats. The second step in the strategic marketing process helps managers understand the resources they can build on and the challenges they face. Strengths and weaknesses are internal factors under the firm's control. For example, a good image in the fashion press would be a key strength for a dress manufacturer, while a poor relationship with clothing re retailers would be a weakness. Opportunities and threats arise from the external environment, like a strong economy or new payroll tax. Objectives. The third step in strategic marketing is to set marketing objectives. These are clear, measurable goals that give decision makers a basis for making choices and assessing progress. Objectives are typically expressed in terms of one or more quantitative targets like revenue, profit, sales or market share. Importantly, each objective must be achievable within a fixed period of time. 
Strategy and Evaluation The fourth step in strategic marketing is strategy development. This involves selecting a target market, a distant group of consumers who are highly likely to, be, to buy the organization's product. Planners must also choose implementation tactics, specifically effective ways to use the marketing mix tools of product, promotion, price, and distribution to reach and influence prospective buyers. The fifth step, evaluation, means specifying how, when, and by whom these tactics are to be monitored and assessed over time. Now that you've got an overall basic knowledge on what marketing is and how it works, we can move on with a study on the development of a marketing plan, as we've shortly introduced here.